The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. This story is about a boy whose name was Naftali. Naftali was a regular mainstream kid growing up in Israel in an orthodox, very religious family. And everything went well and smooth the way it was supposed to, the way his parents hoped and anticipated he would live his life until he turned about 12 or 13. And then he started struggling in school. I'm not sure why. And then he started hanging out with the wrong friends. And one, one Friday night, he wasn't there for a Shabbat dinner. And he showed, home, showed up at home probably at 12 o'clock at night to his worried parents, stinking from smoke and drunk out of his mind. And that was when his parents realized that they had a very serious problem. But things didn't get better. They tried. He tried. Things got from bad to worse until at some point he couldn't live at home anymore. And at that point he was in a really bad spot. Bad spot spiritually, emotionally, and he was in a bad spot with his parents. He'd said things to them that he never thought he would ever say. And maybe they said some things to him that they probably shouldn't have said, but it was clear he couldn't continue living at home. But he'd met kids, guys on the street, rough fellas, and they offered him a bed in their apartment in Tel Aviv, in a little bit of a slummy place. And things were good. He made some money here and there, and we're not going to say how. He did stuff he shouldn't be doing, but he had friends, and he was living the high life. Six months into his residency with these friends, he got into a fight with them one night. And by the time the night was over, Naftali was homeless. He couldn't go back home. He burned those bridges in the biggest way. He couldn't stay with his friends. They didn't want him. And here he is, wandering, roaming the streets of Tel Aviv with nowhere to go. He did it for a few days got some money here and there, begged a little bit. Some kind people had mercy on him. But a week in, he couldn't anymore. And he made a terrible, terrible decision. That life was no longer worth living. Outside of Tel Aviv, there was an old abandoned water tower. And that's where he decided he would spend the last minutes of his life. He climbed to the top and he would end his misery for once and for all. And it was pretty late at night when he built up the courage or lack of courage. He comes to this tower and he begins to climb the stairs. They're kind of like spiral staircases. Up and up and up. Before he gets to the top, all of a sudden he, his foot slips and he notices that there was a piece of paper. And he picks up the piece of paper and it's a brochure. It's a brochure for a place in Israel called Kever Rachel, the tomb of Rachel, right? Our matriarch, Rachel, the wife of Jacob, mother of, the, mother of, of the two of the 12 tribes. And he starts reading and it says it's this amazing place and there's such deep spiritual power and people have gone there and have these transformational experiences. And he's like, I don't know. What the chances that you find in an abandoned water tower, a brochure for the tomb of Rachel? Maybe it's a sign from heaven. I'm still going through with my plans, but I'll take a small detour. And he hitches from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And then from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. And he comes to the tomb of Rachel Imenu, our mother Rachel. And he gets to the tomb, and he expects there's probably not going to be anyone there. It'll just be him and whatever. And the place is hopping. He comes there and he sees there's a group of 20 people. They got their backs to him because they're all praying. And they're saying to him, they're saying Psalms and someone's leading it. And there's a small table there with books on it, prayer books on it, Siddurim on it, Tehillim's, Psalms. And there's a note that says, please join us. Join us in praying for our lost son, Naphtali, the son of Rachel de Lola. His name. And he looks a little bit closer. And he sees his dad is there. His brothers are there. His grandparents are there. The whole family is there. And they're praying for him. But he doesn't have the guts to go over to them. Maybe it's a sign, maybe it's not, but he can't go over to them. 
But all of a sudden he hears from the other side of the tomb. If anyone's been there, the women are on the other side of the tomb. He hears a woman's voice, a voice that he never would forget. And the voice says, Avinu Sheba Shemayim, our Father in heaven, bring back my Naftali. I don't care how he is. I don't care where he is. I don't care what happened to him. I'll take him back. And it was the voice of his mother. And he runs around to the women's section and he falls into his mother's arms. And that was his first step to a very long process of reconciliation, healing, and coming back home. And I shared this story at a lot of different places, different venues, different ages, different stages. And I always ask people, so what's the moral of the story? It's a great story, nice story. What can we learn from the story? God could bring this kid all the way back to the tomb of Rachel and he could see that they're praying for him, but he ain't going in. What was it that got him to come back home? It was his mom. It was her unconditional love for her child and his realization that without him being there, she's not just saying it to him, she means it, she feels it. All of a sudden that changed, that changed the playing field. And that was his first step to reconciliation. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.